Okay. Well, welcome everyone to another Forming Community demo. This one happens to be number 117. We got some good demos today. Um, most of them are Catella related, if not all of them. Um, and so let us jump right into things. I have a few announcements and bits of information first. Um, so if you're unaware and you want to chat with us more about this demo or if you have any other questions about Foreman, um, you can join us on Libera chat under the Foreman. Um, we also have a, a matrix channel as well um, that connects to the IRC via a bridge. And then as for announcements that I've been aware about, um, it, it was a little bit later than Foreman, but Catello 4.6 is now GA. You may have seen the release announcement that happened a little while ago. Um, but yeah, so please give it a try. Let us know if everything's working all right um, and file any bugs that you find. OK, so with that said, we can get started right away on the presentations. So first up, we will have my presentation. Aha. So I have a quick shout out that I wanted to make. I don't have anything to present. Um, I've done a couple demos before about alternate content sources in Catello. I just wanted to remind folks that it is there in Catello 4.6. Um, at the moment, it's uh considered a tech preview so in your settings you'll need to enable the um experimental labs option but once you have that enabled you can create both custom and simplified alternate content sources and if you look back at previous form and community demos i have demos on what both of those are um, and always feel free to reach out to me or anyone on the foreman to ask about alternate content sources if you're interested in giving, giving them a try OK, so now that I'm done with that, um, next up we have Lucy, who's going to be talking about a new feature on the Packages tab um, for adding a drop down to selecting the upgrade version. All right, Lucy, take it away. Thank you, Ian. Let me share my screen. Do you see my screen? Looks good. Thanks. So in the past sprint, we added a drop-down list for package upgradable versions. Before this change, uh, users can only use the latest version of the, up, of the package updates to install on their clients from the new host details UI. That's why the drop-down list was added to list all available versions of the package updates so users can choose the version as per their need. Once you come to the packages page from the new host details interface, you can easily tell if the package is up to date or upgradable. You will see the error sign here. So if you click on the status, choose the upgradables, you will see you will get a list of all the upgradable packages. When there are multiple updates, you will see an uh, arrow sign for the, for the drop down list on the list on the, on upgradable to columns. So if you select a specific version and install the package, that will do it. If you don't specify uh, a version and update, the latest version will be used and installed on the client. That's the same, that's, that also applies to the bug upgrade. If you don't specify a version, then the latest one will get used. That's all I have to share today. All right, thanks for sharing that, Lucy. Um, just give a sec if anyone has any questions that they want to ask. Jeremy says, awesome. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks great. All righty. So we can keep trucking on then. Um, next up, we have Samir, 
he's going to be talking about allowing the deletion of repositories published in composite content views. Hello. All right. So uh, is my screen looking OK there? Maybe bump it up a tiny bit. Back. Looks good. All right. So jumping to the demo here. So of, uh, I think it was 4.5 where we added a new feature which allowed you to delete repositories which were part of any content view published version. So for example, I have a content view here, which has, say, a version 2. And if you look at the repositories, we have the modular repo added to this version. Uh, similarly, I have a composite content view here, which is nothing but a collection of content views. And I added the version 2, which has the modular repo, which we are looking at added to this co composite content view as well. So what I wanted to demo was pretty much this. So when we went live with this feature, we only handled component content views, which are the simple content views which consist of repositories. But with this addition, we also allow deletion now if the repository is part of a composite CV through one of its uh, component content views. So you'll see the similar screen, which was available earlier. It also lists composite content views now. You'll have to confirm that you're sure about removing the repository. It will list all the versions the repository will be removed from. And then you can go ahead and delete and it everything goes well yeah all right so yeah that was all i had to present today so here this, this looks great uh really good improvement i would say do i recall correctly that previously uh if i tried to delete that repo and it would be used somewhere in some content view i would just see the red notification like this is part of some some content view and that's it i wouldn't be able to delete it correct and that error wasn't particularly useful because it wouldn't list all the content views that the repository actually was part of. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to go take all the content views. Right, right. Yeah, I just recently spoke with one user and he said, I have like hundreds of content views and I can't tell, I can't even find which one I need to remove this re this uh, repository from. So I think this, this is really a very good user experience improvement. Yeah, absolutely. After and, the, uh, oh, oh uh, I was just going to mention um, on top of that, just to remind folks, if you haven't seen this before, if you're talking about Red Hat repositories, um, you can't, you won't be able to just disable them from the Red Hat repositories page. You'll have to delete them like they're a normal repository. That's something that we also recently enabled users to be able to do. You used to not be able to delete Red Hat repos, but now you can, and it just disables them in the background. When you delete the content views, and uh, after it gets done, does it update the, if you go back to the content view, does the package count reflect the deletion or? Yes, it should. So let me share my screen again here. And if I go back to the content view details, and this was the version that it got deleted from, so now it will say one repository, and it will only have packages from that one repository, which is the zoo repo that remains. So it does go and delete all the content from the versions. Nice. OK. Um, there is, so with composites, there's one case, I believe when you're doing filtering, where it will actually merge multiple repositories into one. I think it's if you have composites that share the same repository. Um, but it would be interesting to see, in that case, if there was a merger, um, if the old repository's content still sticks around. Um, but you know what? Now that I think about it, I can't remember exactly when that happens. So <laughs> never mind. All 
Okay. Um, if that was all the questions for Samir, um, next up we have Chris, who will be talking about the uh, new candle pin changes that are coming in Catella 4.6, or that have arrived in Catella 4.6, I should say. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, let me know if that's too small. I tried to increase it a little bit. Um, so one of the first things that you'll notice, so the candle pin 4.2, uh, when we refresh a manifest for first off the every all the orgs by default are in simple content access mode so if you create a new org um it'll be in simple content access and you can change that and i'll show that in a minute the uh if you have an org already in entitlement mode and you upgrade it will we'll honor that uh, but with, by, by default all new orgs that are created or all new fresh installs uh, will have simple content access enabled um one of the couple things that I want to point out. Um, first off, if you go to manage manifest, you'll see that the refresh manifest has been taken out. And the reason why is because uh, candle pin itself no longer looks at that value, what's on the manifest, if it's simple content access or not. Uh, candle pin, if you change it to simple content access, it just updates a setting on the local candle pin. So it doesn't actually read the value from the manifest anymore. So we removed that out of there because Candlepin itself decoupled refreshing manifests from the actual manifest operations. So uh, what I also want to show is, let me show the orgs here. So if you go ahead and you create a new org, so we'll go to manage organizations. So shout out to Jeremy for doing this. If you do new organization, you'll actually have the option to create an org with simple content access off or on. So we'll Take one called demo, and we're going to use simple content access. We'll let that run here for a second. And as before, you can always edit simple content access on or off here. Flipping that setting will also will just change the um, just change that setting in the local candle pin. Also, um, also by doing that too, it will no longer go out to the customer portal before if you did uh, you change simple content access on or off um, you would go out to the customer portal uh, look at the manifest do some actions and then come back uh, Lucy prevented we changed that so it doesn't talk to the customer portal anymore because candlepin doesn't it's all local now one of the other things too that you should notice is so in this new demo org I made this org called simple content access we're going to import a manifest here called no SEA you can see the SEA is disabled so we're going to go ahead and import that. And you'll see here that even if I import a manifest that is no longer, um, where is it? If I import a manifest that doesn't have SEA and the org is SEA, normally before you would see the organization flip and honor what's in the manifest. But as you can see here, we still have simple content access enabled. And again, we can go and just turn it we can turn it off if we want to. And before, again, that would go out to the customer portal. No longer, as you see, it's real quick now because it's just changing the value on the local candle pin. Um, I believe that is the most of it. Was there anything, did I miss anything, Jeremy or Lucy? I think I covered most of it, though. I think you were saying before that the, the uh, refresh was gone from the manage manifest screen, but I think you meant to say the, the simple content access toggle. That's that's the thing that is gone. Ah, uh, yes, yes, sorry. Coffee this morning. Ah, uh, yes, so the refresh or the toggle. Not the refresh, the yes, toggle. Yes, the toggle SCA is gone, yes. Yeah, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. And as you can see here now, it's not using it. Now we've got our legacy banner. And if I go to my content host, or whoops, I don't have any content host registered on this one, but maybe it will show the default box. No, nope, it won't. But if I did, I would have a subscriptions tab. So we can see the subscription status there. That's all I had. 
Austin. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. My question is, what would actually be the impact if I have the organization uh, with simple content access enabled, but I imported that uh, manifest, uh, which has it disabled, like you did? Because there was this banner telling me that, like telling me that I imported such a manifest, I guess. But what is the actual impact on the subscriptions? Um, so there shouldn't be any impacts. What would happen is uh, you can really toggle entitlement mode SEA on or off without any impact. The only thing, the majority of what's going to happen is um, your, on the content host page, your subscriptions will, the subscriptions tab on the legacy page will disappear. Um, it, and that's pretty much, um, yeah, so if you have who running, um, obviously those hypervisors, you would you would almost want to turn it off. If you're going to switch to SEA permanently, you would want to turn entitlement mode back on. One of the first things I would recommend doing then is turning off, uh, unregistering the Verhu machines, making sure um, those are gone, and then turn it back on. Because once you turn that tab on, it hides that subscription tab, and that kind of can make things a little bit. But there shouldn't be any detrimental impact. So in other words, it's not seen it's not seen as an erroneous state if I have a uh, manifest which is not configured to be the SCA, but I have organization enabled uh, or SCA enabled on the organization level. That's perfectly valid combination, and the impact is only what I see in the UI in terms of reporting. Correct. Yeah, so the change is that the SCA status is no longer attached to the manifest at all. It's now attached to the organization instead. So okay. you can flip on or off simple content access locally uh, and, it, and it won't affect anything on portal or vice versa. Okay, good job, thank you. So is that flag also gone from the customer portal? So can users not create a CA disabled manifest anymore? Uh, no, see, so you can still, if I share my screen again, uh, let me share it real quick. I think you you might be able to still do it because uh, it, it's, it's just a backward compatibility thing, but I, yeah. I know that you soon will not be able to. Yeah, Jeremy's yeah, correct. They're going to eventually remove it. So you can do, on an organization level, and this is probably going to take forever, so I apologize, but I'm not going to, if it takes too long, I'll just stop sharing. But there's, you can toggle SCA on a manifest level, and then also the organization has it too. So, oh yeah, that's going to take forever. Uh, so never mind. So load it up real quickly. So there's an organization level toggle right here, which I'm not going to touch for this one. Um, and then there's the simple, the one here. But eventually this is going to be turned off when... I'm not sure when Candlepin is going to deprecate the entitlement mode, but when that happens, this will be removed and simple content access will be, is the future. So if you do import a non-SCA manifest and you have SCA enabled, satellite will just ignore. You know, act like, it'll just ignore it essentially. Everything will be SCA anyway. Right. Yeah, and the only issue I see really happening with that, let me stop sharing, is like I said, if you have Verhu, a bunch of Verhu hypervisors, you'd want to clean those up um, because that's no longer needed then. Um, and then the next step is to set up the uh, subscription watch reporting. Um, I just wanted to poke in real quick and mention on this topic, I was talking to a user who did not say, they said they didn't like SCA because they use a lot of custom repositories and it means that th their non Red Hat servers would have all these weird custom repos. And I just want to mention that when SCA is all you get um, and you want to avoid that, uh, repository sets will, will be your friend and that will be the feature that you'll want to use to make sure that your, you know, your CentOS host doesn't get all my Linux stuff and, but, you know, and such. So repository sets will be your friend. Um, yeah, and there's definitely... Yeah. Oh, go on, sorry. sorry, go ahead. 
I was, and there's, I mean, Jeremy may, may want to touch on this because he's working on this actively, but there's also some other things that are coming down the pipe that are going to enhance that with SDA. So with there's multiple environments that are coming down the pipe where you can register a client to multiple content views environments. But also, along with what Ian said with repositories, that can really make that transition to SDA painless for custom products. Um, and we're also looking at, I believe there's an open bug, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, where we can, I think there's a setting where we're going to look at to maybe disable custom products by default or something. I remember it was a long time ago, so I may be wrong, but. Yeah, well. that one's still up in the air. Okay. Didn't you add some restriction features, uh, Jeremy? Well, there's also restrict to OS version and restrict to architecture, which you can use. Um, the uh, restrict to OS version only works with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, unfortunately, because of the, the technical instabilities. Restrict to architecture may work with non-rel systems. Uh, we still have to investigate that. Yeah, that, that's been one of the requested features. And yeah, hope we should do something in the direction in the future. Yeah, but I think the main takeaway here is there'll be some some fun and useful changes to how your hosts get content. And so be looking out for more demos on that coming up. Um, are those all the questions that we had for Chris's presentation? Awesome. Well, thanks for that, Chris. So the last presentation that I see on the schedule um, is going to be from Partha. And he's going to be talking about um, a feature that's in progress, uh, which is the syncable, import, syncable imports via an HTTP web server. So here we go. Just give me a minute. I'm setting up my, let me share my screen. Are you able to see my satellite? Or woman. Looks fine to me. Okay, and is the font size here okay? Are you able to um, see my terminal? I'm okay with it. Okay, and the last one. So say, is it make it in yet? Awesome. So today I. I I want to talk about a new feature I'm here. I'm working on it. It's in review now. Hopefully, uh, stay stable enough for me to demo. <laughs> so, uh, so the idea is this, right? Uh, so far, with respect to import and export, like so, in the past demos, I've I have shown or we have demoed uh, things like how you can export a repository syncably or a content view version in a sync in a CDN format. And then you had to like copy it over to a disconnected uh, instance and then run the import again. Uh, so what happens is so we have we have import we have a connected satellite or a connected permanent instance that is talking to the CDN. We also have a disconnected permanent instance that is running inside the firewall of the customer like Two different, uh, they two different things. They, uh, it's the disconnected one can't access CDN, period. But the disconnected one can access a web server locally inside it. So, so the idea is that I have a, I, I export my content from I sync from the CDN first in my connected satellite. Then I export the content in whatever, whether it's version, library, or repository. I export the content. Then I copy the content over to a web server inside my firewall. And then my imp on the import side, I can point to that web server and say, pull everything. So, so this provides a very convenient feature because now you can have like a lot of quite a few customers have like an internal web server, but multiple satellites or foreman instances pulling from it. So this provide this feature will provide them a convenient way to just pull things 
has to manifest says. So I'm just going to do a quick demo and then hopefully it's clearer after that. And for convenience sake, I'm just going to use the same, I'm using the same instance reality to be two different satellites, two different Pullman instances. Uh, but I'm going to just use the second org to import. So in my first org, let me show you what I have. I have a, I have a pro custom product. I have also enabled a couple of Red Hat repositories, two different versions of Ansible engine. And both are both have a sync status of a download policy of immediate, uh, which is important because you need that for export. Same with same here, immediate. Right now, so the idea is the, and I have a content view. Let me show that also. I have a content view called demo view, right? Where there's version one of, okay? and it has has all the three repositories. So it has all the three repositories that I have. So this is version one of. Now the now what I plan to do is I plan to export this and copy it to a web server, and then in the from the other org. I'll just import it, point into that web server, and it should automatically create me the content views. It should all, automatically create me the products, repositories, uh, all the jazz. So let's, let's see the feature in action. Let's get the version ID of version 1.0. Well, let's see if I'm top. Uh, okay. So if I did. Hammer box and say content export version. You should say ID equals 12. And we need the format to be syncable. So, so this only works for the syncable format case. Hit, hit enter. Okay. It'll, it'll do its export, uh, and then we'll soon see a directory you chose with the metadata JSON in it. Okay. We'll just copy this directory. Okay. Paste it here. So you see it has, let's see, and if I did du minus sh dot, and six, about 600 megabytes worth of data. So just, I just run that to make sure that I actually did the export. Uh, this seems to be the correct size. Uh, and now, so the, now, the, now the idea is, I need the user is going to copy this directory. Whatever, whatever is in this directory, I'm going to copy to a web server that is accessible to the that is accessible to my internal side, my import satellites or disconnected satellites, put it better. Uh, so to, but to fake that here is the demo purpose. I'm just going to create, I'm just going to run a server, a web server here. And say Python minus M. And give a quick number. Beep, sorry. But to put it in perspective, what I just did, let's go to port 6060 here. Very good. This is the stuff we just. Uh, so it's, it's as if I copied it to a web server or copied it to a bar, WWPUB, which you know how to use Apache for it. Uh, I'm just trying to make it simpler by just running this server here to show. So now, now the idea is I have, I have a web server here, I have the content here, and I'm in, so let, let's say I'm in a different satellite. Here's my 
I have an org called demo import that I've created, and I need this content imported into the demo org. Sorry. There you go. So here, if you notice, I've imported a manifest and everything. I will also mark this as an export sync. So the idea is this this org is disconnected. This org is, is acting like a, it, you can only import and export into it. Uh, so let's run the command now and see what it does. We get to fetch the URL here. Copy that. Reset this. We can say timer, content, import, version. <laughs> I think the organization is demo import. And app equals my web server. So the basic rule here is whatever I give in the path should have a metadata JSON directory on the top level. So if you were, if I was in a different, right, if I was in like a pop and like a folder structure, a directory structure, uh, I would have to point to the metadata JSON uh, directory. But it doesn't, it doesn't do like spider and CD everything in, like any, any, any sort of magic like that. Satellite just pulls what is there in the metadata the JSON and says, oh, okay, the metadata JSON says I need to have a content view. I need to have these products enabled. I need to have these repositories created. I need to have them synced. I need to have a version that is created for this. So it's all doing getting that information from this metadata JSON file. The actual content, of course, is coming from uh, coming from uh, whatever we exported. So, okay, that's information. So, if I did this. So let, let's see while this is running. Uh, it takes a little bit of time uh, for some reason, but let's see what the letter it started the process here. If I see products, look at that. So it's already created products. It's, it enabled the Ansible repositories I need. We are still, one of them already synced. One of them is waiting on sync. Here, if I click on my product, one of them is waiting on sync. Uh, or the one this got synced already. Now, if I look at the URL here, you see that it's pointing to my 6060 box. Uh, and same here. So if I go to, it's basically pulling it from uh, from my web server. So if I go here. Again, it's just pulling from my web server. Uh, so, and finally, if I did a, if I went to content views, it should have synced everything and published after the sync was completed. So there you go. We have the same number, 10886. And you can see that in my web server, it sh the output shows that content was being synced from, from this directory. So that, that's pretty much all I had with respect to syncable imports. But I think I, I feel this is this could be this would be useful for many customers that have a web server and multiple satellites pulling from it. Uh, so, the other thing, there was one other thing I wanted to show. I know if I can demo that. So we, so we, we've had a couple of bugs where, where there's something off with the entitlement certificate due to some dirty data issue. Maybe maybe they upgraded from a really old instance and there was some change, certificate. So. We have noticed that there are some repositories. Some we have not been able to a pattern on it yet, but we know we have noted that some of these repositories they don't have a handle pin content in there. So one of the 
one of the theories we have had is the when they enabled the repository and when the when the manifest expired candle pen tries to delete the content right? so what happens is the data is in Catello, but it's not in candle pen so we have this awkward dirty data issue and unfortunately we 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 have not done a good job of telling the customer that hey you you know what this is broken like you so let me yeah uh, saying we so what we what we added in this uh, we recently was if you i i can't simulate it right now but if you if you had a bad day if you had like any sort of bad data like the, the content was not there in candle pen you can you can any operation including sync the so if you any of the popular op operations like sync or publish or promote all of those will complain saying hey you have a bad repository so fix it before you try to do anything with it so that was that was a safeguard we have, we have added hopefully it will help us detect these cases earlier sooner and i think chris has chris also recently added a way to check that for all the repositories on your satellite so there's a rate task you can run that'll say hey this repo's bad this repo's bad this repo's good and so it's it's a useful way for us to at least diagnose what's happening and hopefully we'll get better information from that. Um, Partha, is that the correct repositories rig test by chance? The correct, yeah, it, the, the correct repository, I, I think Chris, did you create a new one? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, there's one that checked the candle open content. So the, that's different, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think the correct repositories will still work. You can run correct repositories and try to delete the repository. but. The idea here is, you know, the, the remediation steps would be either you refresh or you just like get rid of the product and the repository, like destroy the repository and recreate it. That'd be good. If your manifest is all good, that's the that's the next op best option. You know, but, so uh, it's right now. Right now, we don't know the exact instance where this disconnected issue appears, but we have seen a lot of customers get it, and we have not been able to figure out a single reproducer to. Do this internally so this is the next best thing we could do yeah and to add on what Arthur said yeah i did a rate test just to check the content because there's the candlepin team has a script um that's been very somebody wrote it a uh, community member wrote it and then a um, i believe from atex and then uh the candlepin team made some changes to it and it's uh but there it's it's using raw sql to fix the candlepin instance um, and the content. So there is a fix for it, but I didn't want to include a bunch of raw SQL in the rig task. So what the rig task is just to simply say, kind of like what Partha's uh, PR did and just basically say, hey, you have issues. And hopefully either for a community member, they would open a discourse post or an issue and we can point them to the, the fixed script. Or if they're a satellite customer, they can open a support case and then that support engineer can work with the Candlepin team to get a fix. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much what I had. Uh, thank you. So, uh, I had a question here. Go ahead. The Red Hat repositories that were imported here, do they are they treated as Red Hat repositories, or do they are they treated as like custom repositories? Here? They are definitely treated as Red Hat repositories. In fact, uh, what if I can let me show you? Maybe I can show you a dinosaur if you're interested. If I if I went here, format as Steinflow, and let, let's see the the, la, the latest import as that was successful. Yeah. If you if you look at it, it's doing a lot of things, but the big part it's doing is uh, so the auto create will create it as a Red Hat repository. Here, there you go. Auto create Red Hat repositories. There's a step called that, yeah. and I we can make it bigger. Shall we? Ah, that's better. Okay. So there's something called auto create Red Hat repositories. That step will create it as a Red Hat repo. Okay. 
So it actually is running enable repository. So it's as if you went to the Red Hat repositories page and clicked enable this repository. So it, that's why when it gets created, it looks like an ex exactly it behaves exactly like a Red Hat repository. It's just that the content URL is pointing to the web server. So what happens is then you can sync. So if you, so then, uh, yeah, aren't we? So yeah, the it, it, yeah basically it then tries to sync this. Uh, there's a uh, this is the that's the bulk action that's running in parallel. It's called so it waits for the sync bulk action to complete. So it synced all the three repositories that we just created, okay. and then it says, "Oh, okay. Let me create the content view for you, and reset my reset to my metadata." Then the, now that I've synced everything, I'm ready for publish. So I, it actually publishes. So it's fairly involved, but it it does like it is. It's almost like you're doing the operations yourself. It just helps you cut some manual steps that you're going to, be going to do otherwise. Does it help? Yeah, that answers the question. Thank you. Thanks. Arsha, can you uh, explain a bit more? Uh, who is who is the primary user of that? Like, what is the use case here? I, I understand that uh, I would be interested in this if I have two foremans or two satellites. Mm -hmm. And I want to replicate the content from one on the other. Uh, yes. So I'll give you an example. Like we have some like uh, secure customers in secure environments. Uh, so we have we at least need so this for this to feature to be even useful, we need at least two foreman servers, one to export and one to import. That's good. But they also have what are, they also have multiple instances in the background there. So so these customers, they have multiple formants running inside their or in their their environment. So there's different departments. Each has their own satellite instance, for example, and they all want to be able to pull. They previously we used to give them a content ISO. CDN used to give them a content ISO that they could extract and pull from each of these. But now this one offers one step better because it also auto creates, auto enables all 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 that. All that jazz, uh, but the, the primary use case of this is the customer who has one connected foreman or satellite instance and multiple disconnected satellite environments, and he's wanting he he's willing to pull he's pulling from a web server. Okay, and can I use the HTTP server that we use for the foreman itself for publishing this? I see that you're running it on some different port, but can I just put this exported content in you the var www somewhere? Yeah, I there was some bug I had in my dev environment where I couldn't do that, like that conveniently. Like, let me see if I can see pub. Oh, I can see pub, okay. So in my dev environment, I can actually, so I, I could have just moved it here yeah, and, and pointed it to the URL there. Like just, I didn't need a, I didn't need to run the separate web server. Uh, I could, I could just move it to my www HTML pub, uh, okay. and it would have worked. Okay, great. And the last thing is, uh, you showed us the hammer commands, uh, which is nice. But I suppose if I want to keep my two formants or multiple formants in sync, I want to automate that. So my question is, do you happen to know if there's a formant Ansible module for that? Uh, uh, so I can automate it through through my Ansible playbooks. Uh, it's in it's it's in the works now. We have that planned in our sprint. I think the at least the sync. Do we have it the sprint? The syncable the syncable part for the form and Ansible modules. Uh, uh, it's in there somewhere. I don't remember if it's the sprint or not. Yeah, the, we it's in it's in works. It's right. It's not there right now. But when we add the syncable support, we'll we'll add it for both export and import. And awesome. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And and one thing to also note is so so the only diff so I the previous demo and I did my, like last last time. The big difference here is now you're giving a HTTPS uh, giving a path like you I could have also copied I could have also directly given you the directory. Okay. And it would it would know how to handle that. So I, I could have just 
I could have pointed to whatever this directory was. So I didn't, I didn't need a web server even. So the idea is I, if I had one Foreman instance, and uh, one connected Foreman instance and one disconnected Foreman instance, I can just copy this over to the other Foreman instance and just locally run the import command point with the path pointing to that directory. Yeah. So I, but this is only useful if I have multiple, uh, that's the, that's the use case for this. I have multiple disconnected from them. And so to tell your foreman instance that you want to use the syncable export style, you just had to um, select a certain option on the subscriptions page. We're under the CDN configuration. Was that right? So, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Let me explain why that is why I did that. You're, you're talking about the middle step I did, right? Where I went to manage manifest. Yeah. And changed my CDN configuration to export sync. Right. So the yep. so the idea is this: uh, since this, whoever, whichever customer is using this, he knows his environment is disconnected, so he will be act. Is supposed to have export sync set in there. Okay? What this export sync does is so if I, if I, for example, if you go to the Red Hat repositories page, okay, there is, and if I, uh, wrong, sorry, this export thing. So let me, let me go to, go to my default org page here where it's not, an ex, not set to export sync. Okay. So if you go to this page, like if you see, if I expand this, for example, it actually is actually going to the Red Hat CDN. Trying to figure out what are the possible substitutions I can do for this repository, and what are, what is the subset I can get? Like it's it there's this middle query operation that goes to CDN and checks whether you have what all versions you have, and that, this is what a listing file will give you. A listing file will give you eight six, eight four, eight two, and eight one. Uh, in fact, I can I don't know if it will display on the screen. Ah, uh, downloads normal. Yeah. Yeah. Then let me let me show you here. Maybe how you don't need need the web server any longer. So I went to like content and this layer does the answer we want. So there's a listing file you see here, right? So it it basically has the directory structure. That CDN uses. Okay, yeah. So if I if I did this thing, you see how it is x eighty six sixty four there. So the what happens is when I click this, we send a call to the CDN. We say, hey, give me all the possible substitutions. Give me all the possible architectures. And CDN says, it's what CDN does is it, it goes through each directory. But yeah, actually, what happens is uh, when we click this button, right? Sorry, yeah. Foreman talks to CDN, right? Foreman says, give me the listing files in each of these directories. And from the listing files, it figures out what are the possible arches that I can use, what are the possible versions that I can use. So there's there's this middle step of it it talking to the CDN. If I have export sync turned on, that is disabled because we know that whatever is there in the web server or whatever is there in our dump is the is the gold stand is the gold. So we assume that it's the main thing, and so we don't we don't check for possible substitutions to CDN etc. So like so, customers who are in this disconnected environment they can't access CDN. So that's the first reason they're in the disconnected environment, right? So for them, setting the export sync is the correct way to handle it. Otherwise, it'll time out. It'll try to find substitutions and time out saying, hey, this URL you asked me to go, I can't go there. So yeah, so bad things might happen. Uh, so this one is, so that's why, that's why we, we introduced this, even that option of export sync. Gotcha. I had a feeling it would be something like that, but clears up any suspicions. 
yeah it's good good to be us yeah so now we have like four of them like we have the you can you can pull from a dump a web server a network sync server a custom cdn server a red hat cdn server like so there's like Dep depending on your scenario, you have a you can have your own configuration that will help you. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty much all I had. Any other questions? All righty, I think that's it. Thanks a bunch for that presentation there, Partha. Um, and unless anyone has any other spur of the moment things to talk about, I think that brings this demo to a close. So thanks everyone for all the great presentations and the great questions. We'll make sure that this is uploaded so that folks can watch it who weren't here. And as always, feel free to ask us questions after the fact on the community website or in IRC. And so that's it. We will talk to you later, folks. Thank you, all presenters in the end for hosting. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, all.